Teddy Kegstat, what's going on with the note and bond market, man? Wow, we got some good stuff to talk about today. And I'll tell you what, the people who have been reading the uh, the uh, Tiger Forex report must be happy with the numbers, that's for sure. You've so, had some great um, calls, man. So even from the conversation we had on Monday in terms of right. uh, notes and bonds uh, with the letter. So congrats, man. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, let's get into it. So where, where do we go, man? We got oil. We got notes and bonds. We got the market. Where do you kick it off? Let's, well, let's talk about the interest rates first. So the bonds spiked high. They rejected our upside target uh, zone. We, they pierced it by a few ticks, and now they're three handles lower. So I think you really have to key off of what happened yesterday as far as the interest rates and also with the dollar index. Either we put in the short, either this correction is over right now for the short term, and we're going to start getting back to the regular trend at hand, or we're going to take it out and we're going to extend this correction. You know, And I think right now we put in a short-term top in the bond market, a short-term bottom in the dollar market, You know, and that's going to definitely uh, be what we're going to have to follow over the next couple of days as we head into unemployment. And the question is, will unemployment be the accelerator and put us back onto these trends, meaning dollar bulls and an um, interest rate bear, or is unemployment going to shake up the market and all of a sudden we have a lift in bonds, meaning uh, lower rates and also a, a dollar that gets under pressure again? And I think that's the inflection point we'll see. But right now, I think I'm, I'm right now I'm bearish on uh, bonds and I'm bullish on the dollar. So would that be looking for, you know, you wait for Friday's number. I mean, in theory, you already have some Fed speak out here today, right, mm -hmm. saying 2.5%, 2.6 was probably not where we should be in terms of what the market was reading from Chairman Powell or maybe expecting. Uh, we're back mm -hmm. to 2.8% on the 10-year real quick. Uh, so that would maybe lean towards we get some of that data. I know, I know you're saying the data is going to drive it. But really looking towards the Fed probably still needing to hike and inflation persisting, if that if that scenario might play out with us hiking interest rates, giving the dollar more strength and continuing that trend. Would that be Correct. right? Correct. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, crude, crude oil this morning. So OPEC with a, the smallest of margins increase uh, of 100,000 barrels a day. Crude pops. And then we get a little bit of a give back. We've held kind of that critical area of, of whether mm -hmm. it's 93, 94, 95 bucks on the lower side of there. What's your take on, on that crude acceleration today? I think it's just a pepper rally moment from the news, to be quite honest with you. I think that's all the selling and pressure is right now. I would be very cautious with it. I think that the numbers, if you, when you really see what actually gets delivered and how things come to market, I think it's going to be bullish on oil still. I think this is just a news driven or just a little bit of puffery, you know, to kind of help, help keep the prices down. But it's not. The reality is they're capped out. They're, they're not going to be able to produce to any. There's no way they can increase production to meet demand, especially moving forward, moving, especially going into winter time. Yeah, and it seems like, um, and you make a great point because uh, I was reading an article this morning. Bloomberg said, you know, uh, of the increases they've had, really, it's only the Saudis and the UAE that really hit that number, and you have all right. the other members that don't. Um, right. And then you put those numbers in terms of where they end up on 100,000 barrels, and you have the president just going over to the kingdom. Uh, he can't mm -hmm. be a happy camper this morning. So it seems like the <laughs> slightest of what they could do as opposed to doing nothing, right, maybe with him right. being over there. So you take sure. that for what it's worth, man, not exactly a, a, a price acceleration to the downside. How about uh, the dollar yen, Teddy? We've had some action in, in pretty decent in both directions right now for the mm -hmm. dollar yen. We're back to 133.66. We made it to 130 and change yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your take on the dollar yen? I'm, I'm bullish right now. Like I said, at least moving into unemployment, I am bullish to dollar, especially in markets like the U.S. dollar yen and the U.S. dollar Swiss. They're the ones that had the most extreme correction. OK, so I think that they just when you look at how markets go out and they come in just on a volatility basis. I'm very bullish on the yen and the Swiss right now. So and where would you look forward to the upside? Can it really challenge almost 140 again? Um, it's remarkable. It was there July 14th after trading sure. lower. Okay, well, let's say, oh, let's say that I'm right on the correction being over. If that's the case, then yeah, we're gonna take out the high in the US dollar yen. I would look, okay. for, I would look for parity in US dollar Swiss and I would look for every bit of testing 140. I think we could cool. challenge that. And that would be in a short amount of time too. Remember, we cool. have two months to a Fed meeting and if, if, the, if we can get through Friday and, and keep this trend intact, then that means we'll have confirmed that the correction is over in, in, those, in the broader markets. 
Yeah, it's going to be interesting, man. Friday's number, which is crazy. It's less than 48 hours from right now. And then we get CPI next week. It seems like those two big numbers alone might really shed some light on what's going mm -hmm. on here. And, uh, and, and if the trends make it through there, man, what else is stepping in the way, um, at least for the foreseeable future with those two numbers? Mm -hmm. Pretty important right now with what's coming down the line. And if CPI uh, is higher, you know that the Fed's going to have to raise rates. Oh. If CPI is higher, folks, theory. watch out. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. Um, because it is remarkable that for all the talk we got out of the chairman's last press conference, the last data point we have is 9.1% for CPI. Mm -hmm. But it's so dated that it gives all of this room. You know, it's June data. Even the number we're going to get is July. They're not meeting again until next month, September. Um, so much data coming at us. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. What else? Anything else in terms of waiting for Friday's action that you're watching? I mean, as a Forex trader, do you just kind of mm -hmm. keep those trends that you talked about in place and then we wait for Friday and, and you take a look at what happens after the jobs number? Yeah, right now I'm using, I'm playing just a pure technical thing because the way I'm looking at it is if the if the markets reverse and all of a sudden, like for instance, the dollar index, the low that they hit yesterday was it was a key level. You know, just like the bonds, the high in the bonds yesterday was a 50% move from the March high down to the recent swing low of, of a month and a half ago. So that's a really really big pivot point. So like I said, either we've hit the end of the correction or whatever puts it, propels us through that is gonna surge us to extend that leg higher in a big way, which is technically driven because remember we've been talking about we have a divergence in the interest rate market versus the Fed. You know, rates are going up, bond prices are going up. How is that possible? You know, so there, there's, yes. a, there's a rubber band effect that eventually one of them has to give. Either the Fed stops raising rates and goes with the market or the market has to snap back. You can only be at a premium or a discount in that spread between, the, you know, and also you look at the interest rate spreads in, in themselves look, between the euro dollar, the interest rate versus, the, you know, the LIBOR. All these things are, are now at, at, at like inflection points that are crazy. You haven't seen the differentials like this in a long time. Yesterday, the 10 year was almost tick for tick with the 30 year at the beginning of the day that's a big deal most people don't look at the different you know usually the, yes. the bonds are like you know three to two ticks or maybe sometimes two to one you know but you don't have them one to one that's i mean we're literally the bonds are up 20 and the, and the notes are up 20 ticks that just does not happen you know yeah. and when you do somehow those spreads someone the, the money is going to move and there was no blow-ups at any of any brokerage houses usually the only time you have those occurrences when, is when you have someone where they have a big margin call and they have to dump one month or something or with something yeah. like that it gets a little you know? distorted from one action of, correct of, of, yeah uh, you know, if you take a look at that 30 year as well, man, you put it on a monthly, go back to 1999, the trend line that mm -hmm. it is bouncing off, right? It bashes through that trend line and all it's done, folks, is come back and just tested that line. And maybe that's where it goes lower. Uh, our man mm -hmm. Bud Rolfs, the channel master, an old uh, technician at TFN, he'd say you break the trend, right? And then you wait for it to come back and test that trend. Right. Boy, if that's what it did, watch out, folks, on the 30 year. Right. Teddy, we Fun appreciate stuff. it as always, man. Uh, you have a great one and we'll talk you to too. you next Wednesday. Take care. Thanks. You too.